We're doing this one take. Ready, Phil? <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. We're doing this in one take. What's up, guys? Roscoe here. About a million questions on the new Shredder lineup from Lynx, and this is uh, not probably not everything you want to know, but as much detail as I can give you with what I know so far riding the snowmobile. So here I have the Shredder RE, Shredder Race Edition. The other model in North America is the Shredder DS, that's deep snow. However, the RE still gets it done in the, the deep snow. This is going to be my weapon of choice going forward. So, Lynx, we've moved away from the Boondocker name because we have a whole new platform here. Lots of changes, a lot more changes uh, going on here than what you just see right off the bat and um, a lot of questions to go along with them. So we're gonna start with the, at the front and just work our way back. The first thing that I wanna address are the main differences between the RE and the DS. So the biggest differences are the suspension setup and uh, the shocks that are actually in the snowmobile, along with the other few little minor things. But up front on the RE, we have the KYB adjustable with compression and rebound 36 millimeter uh, coils with a reservoir. So we have three modes. We have soft, medium, and firm. Uh, so uh, three adjustable modes there. We also have our rebound adjustment as well. So lots of adjustability, pretty aggressive valving. They're pretty firm out of the box, which is awesome. Something that I've been looking for for a long time. And they're also Kashima coated. So uh, this proto sled here almost has 40 hours on it already. So uh, we have, I've been using and abusing, testing, learning and uh, riding the hell out of it, which has been really fun. Pretty honored to be able to do that. So that's the, those are the front shocks. Now the DS just comes with the same shocks we had last year on the Boondocker DS, which are, they're actually a little bit lighter shock. They have a different spring, but they are the KYB, no reservoir, uh, mono tubes, uh, just the coils. So big upgrade up front, and we're gonna talk about the rear. Same thing goes there. We're gonna have a huge upgrade in the rear on the RE. Now our body work is almost three inches narrower. It's about two and three quarters inch, inches narrower. When you stand over the sled, you see how much narrower it is. We also have uh, quite a bit more narrow on the running boards as well. So the whole, the whole chassis is slimmed up and makes it a lot more nimble and side hills better. Obviously all those things along with big weight savings. So we've lost, uh, I believe it's 30 pounds from the previous RE to this RE. Now, the DS lost a little bit less weight because the DS was already a light snowmobile. Um, the RE is going to be a handful of pounds heavier than the DS because of the suspension package. Um, I can't remember exact numbers. I think it's something like eight pounds heavier. Don't judge me on any of those on those numbers because there's a lot to remember. Um, up front, we have the triple headlight design. I think it looks nasty and, and, and sweet, you know, to each their own. For some reason, whenever new stuff comes out, guys don't like the way things look. But um, there's actually a reason why the Lynx has three headlights. It's because in Scandinavia, those guys ride it a lot in the dark, right? Like they're so far north that they spend a lot of time riding in the dark. So we have really bright headlights. I believe it's like over 3,000 lumens on high beams. Up, up front, we have storage here. And we also do have uh, USB power right here. So if you get, even if you get this gauge, you get USB power. On top, we obviously have the new 10 inch gauge as well, which is like the big iPad looking gauge. And uh, a note on that is it, it adds about five pounds. So with that gauge comes a small battery and wiring harness and such. So you have to, it, adds, it does add a little bit of weight. Now the cool part about that new gauge from BRP is it will get software updates and continue to add functions going down the road. So if you're gonna have your sled for a, hand, for a handful of years, it might be worth the investment right off the bat. Um, but that gauge will continue to evolve. Um, the Under the clutch here, same same essential power plant. We have the 850. Now this sled is turboed. You can get this naturally aspirated as well. So you can get in the Shredder RE, you can get turbo 3900, which is a 154. Can't get a turbo 165 or a 4100 in the RE, only in the DS. And in North America, you can get a Shredder RE naturally aspirated 3700 which is uh, 146 or 144. In North America you cannot get a Shredder RE Turbo 146. I know you guys are asking for it. Keep asking, okay? That's not my role is to decide what models come and go from North America, all right? But if you want it, they're listening, they're watching. 
On the controls here, we have the new adjustable brake lever as well. Um, so you can pull this in and out. This is a great feature right out of the box. The, all the Lynx mountain sleds come with this brake reservoir cover as well right out of the box. So we get a few little things like that. This sled has a 95 millimeter riser on it. That's my personal riser. The Shredder RE comes with a 145 millimeter riser. So pretty tall riser. I believe it's like five inches, five, six inches. Whereas the Shredder DS comes with the shorter riser. I think it's, a, it's 120 millimeters. So uh, quite a bit uh, taller riser on the RE versus the DS, but that's a rider preference thing. Super easy to change out. It's, it's uh, eight bolts total and it takes about 15 minutes or 10 minutes, depending on how fast you are. We have a removable door here for our oil, just like um, our counterpart. So removable here, this whole thing slides out. I'm not gonna go over all that. I'll, I'll talk about that in another video potentially. New running boards, guys. a lot of guys have been asking about our new tunnel, and um, the tunnel is still a 16 wide tunnel. So you could put a 16 wide track under this snowmobile. Um, 16 wide tunnel, but a new 15 inch long rod track, which is something that I was asking for. Uh, for me, it allows that snowmobile to be a little bit more nimble and quicker, hold an edge a little bit better. Um, so that's a huge uh, upgrade for us. 15 wide track, long rods, which means the track is stiff all the way across. There's no flex edge in it. Three inch paddles, 2.86 pitch, if you guys are super nerdy about it, but you can get the three inch in this sled, and that's what this is, this is a three inch. Now, this sled has the accessory rear bumper on it. Uh, typically, it won't come with the rear bumper, but it does have our reinforcement plates here. On my personal sleds, I won't be running a rear bumper to prove to you guys that we don't need a rear bumper and I'll do a full video series on it if that's what it takes on how to get unstuck without using your rear bumper. This is like crazy, huh? Obviously, our new running boards are insane. They're narrow, they uh, clear out snow super well. And back here, we have our belt storage because we lost so much um, room in the panel section and the, the clutches now actually are their own vent system, their own fan system essentially. We store our belt right here and if you get the big display, the battery sits right here. So this will have a little bit different piece as well. Uh, I think we're gonna have an accessory line for some more storage here going, going on in the future. Comes with two uh, full set of Lynx brackets. Now, let's talk about the skid. So the biggest difference between the RE and the DS uh, are a few things in the skid. The number one thing being the suspension. Now, the DS comes with a similar setup to the Boondocker DS last year with uh, monotube shocks, Kashima coated, uh, 36 millimeter piston, and uh, these on the RE are 46 millimeter piston. So, pretty big difference there. Uh, in the DS, you're not going to have the adjustability that you have in the RE. Uh, you don't have the rebound or the high speed or low speed compression. So, a lighter package for sure, quite a bit lighter, but not going to be as uh, burly and set up for the bumps and jumps like the RE is. The RE also has the rail stiffener, which the DS doesn't. So a little bit lighter in the rear, uh, no rail stiffener. And those are the differences in the rear skid that everybody's been asking about. All right, we have a few things here. We have uh, bogey wheels that the DS doesn't have. We actually have rail stiffeners that run um, the majority of the rail. And we have these bad boy shocks right here. So these are 46 millimeter piston shocks. So that means they are massive. The same size shocks that are on the uh, Rave sled, which is the bad boy trail sled that eats bumps for a living. These are the same weight of shocks. Different valving obviously, and they're, they're mountain valved, but 46 millimeter in the center track shock and the rear track shock. Now the rear track shock has uh, high speed, low speed, and rebound adjustment. So you get all the adjustment you need there and it's reservoir. So you guys should be able to tune the shock how you want it. Um, I'm gonna come out and say that this is the best stock rear suspension in the game right now because it just, nobody else has a shock this big. Nobody else is running a full Kashima shock. Like it's pretty insane what it's doing right out of the box and um, you can fine tune it to yourself as well. So. The, the boys over at Lynx have this thing pretty dialed in. I haven't touched it. Uh, so, you know, I hope everybody can be somewhat happy with that. But you guys are hard to please. You know that? You suspension nerds out there? Jeez. Also, when it comes to the limiter strap, we have four adjustments with a 13 millimeter uh, bolt. So you literally just 
push the front track shock down and you have four adjustments on where you want to run that so you can really control the feel and the ski pressure of this snowmobile with that and it takes about five minutes i love that option it gives us four adjustments instead of two and it's just a no hassle pretty easy uh, adjustment to make i run mine where i run it and i don't change it i'll talk about the actual setup of mine in another video we have our same low seat um the, the ergonomics around the tank didn't change too much but where the big change was was in the paneling uh, side to side and it, it it really does feel narrow that's kind of the gist of this sled i do want to talk a little bit about the skis because they are uh, they are a huge contributor to why the snowmobile handles the way it, it handles. Now, the Blade DS Plus ski is super wide. It's the widest ski in uh, the mark on the market out of the box. Uh, it's a long, flat ski with a pretty aggressive keel, and what that allows the sled to do is drive forward. Now, some of you guys might be saying, "Well, it, it, it's hard to steer. It's too aggressive." Yeah, sometimes it is hard to steer when you're when you're going slow and you're milling through the trees, but at speed and with aggression, the, the ski is very predictable, and that's what the boys over in Finland have wanted the snowmobile to do. The engineers told me, and they've been tell and they, they tell many people, we're not building this snowmobile for the North American market. We're building it for our market because we know that there's riders in North America that will like this sled. And that's that's true. This sled's built for speeds. Um, that are maybe a little bit faster, maybe a little bit more aggressive. So keep that in mind when it comes to, you know, how oh, it is a little hard to steer right here, but at speed it is much more predictable. Also, we do have a 36 inch front end. We do not have a 34 inch front end. If you wanted to bolt the 34 inch front end on here, you could, but it goes back to that idea of this sled is meant to be ridden hard and fast. And uh, sometimes the 34 can be a little bit maybe twitchy or, uh, not as stable as a 36 plus the 36 is a little bit harder to get on edge maybe but it lets you side hill even steeper stuff because you're not going to panel out that skis out there a little bit further um, our spindle is actually a little bit different than the skidoo spindle the offset is uh, a negative five millimeter opposed to a negative eight on the the dew spindle so there's some differences there essentially what i'm trying to tell you guys is all of these little differences make uh, this snowmobile totally different than, um, let's say, its its cousin or its brother. Now, we all we have the suspension, we have the skis. All of these little things make it quite a bit different, and uh, it's uh, it, it's pretty insane once you ride it. The difference that you feel. So, when I see guys say that, oh man, this just a, uh, there's no difference. There's no difference. It, you haven't a ridden it, and b you don't. You need to understand how big of differences, suspensions, and um, the controls, the way the sled is set up, actually make the sled handle. Like, that changes the whole game. Um, we're not just throwing different shocks on the snowmobile. The, the PPS suspension system that they have developed over the years is the crazy part, and I will talk about it more. But it is almost an uncoupled suspension that uh, allows the front track shock to not affect or the rear track shock to not affect how the front track shock works. It can kind of get confusing, but um, I will continue to dive into that on a later video. But I hope that guy that answered a lot of your guys' questions on the differences between the RE and the DS. And um, my choice is the RE because of the, uh, the stuff that's gonna handle. So thanks for watching. Let me know what other questions you have. Make friends in the comments, not enemies. And like and subscribe. I'll see you.